Um, I'm Patrick Bourne. I'm Managing Director of the Fine Arts Society. The Fine Arts Society have been dealing in British paintings since the 1870s in London. We also have a gallery in Edinburgh called Bourne Fine Art, and the exhibition actually started in Edinburgh, um, has, has now come here for a fortnight, and then we'll go down to London when to coincide late this year when the big uh, Glasgow Boys exhibition goes to the Royal Academy. I, this is a big year for, for the Glasgow Boys and for Lavery. Um, there's a major exhibition, actually the biggest exhibition that's ever been held, is in Glasgow, in Kelvin Grove Art Gallery in Glasgow at the moment until late summer, and then it goes down to the Royal Academy in London. Um, Lavery fits into that um, exhibition as... Actually, there are more paintings by Lavery than any other artist in the exhibition. I think there's 16 or 17 Glasgow boys represented altogether, but um, La Lavery, as I say, has a larger share than anybody. And his, Lavery's obviously born in Belfast. Um, parents died when he was very young, and he was um, shipped off to Ayrshire and brought up by an uncle and aunt. So that took him to Scotland, and then he trained as an artist in Glasgow and became friendly with the group that became the Glasgow Boys. The Glasgow connection actually doesn't last much beyond um, his... It, until about 1887, 88. He then becomes a really international artist, um, and Glasgow is left behind. Um, but I, I think that his best period is uh, those years um, shortly after his Glasgow training um, in the mid-1880s. Um, He's the most glamorous and international of all the Glasgow boys in that he paints... Um, he spent a lot of time in Paris in the 1880s and in Grez, in Barbizon, with a very international group of artists, um, American artists, uh, Australian artists, Scandinavian artists, as well as English and French artists. Um, and from there, he goes off to the Riviera, he goes off to Tangier in North Africa, and he's then over in um, Florida and in Hollywood. He goes to Hollywood late in his career and paints Shirley Temple and Maureen O'Hara, Maureen O'Sullivan, sorry, and um, stars like that. And his other um, great um, connection, really, was um, he taught Churchill, Sir Winston Churchill, to paint. And he and his wife, who, who is um, Hazel Rizzo, great socialite, um, moved socially in very high circles and he, he painted the royal family. And so really from humble beginnings in Belfast um, and then he gets a knighthood. Um, he really becomes a big international star. We've, we've got um, ten of the Glasgow boys. Um, they're quite hard to get uh, in terms of uh, this is a commercial exhibition, a selling exhibition. We have borrowed some, but most of them are for sale. But they don't come on the market very often. They were recognised as being very good at quite early on, and a lot of their pictures, the major pictures, were in, have been in museums, actually all over the world, in America as well as in Europe, from, from the early days. Um, so we've got 35 pictures here, of which um, eight are by Lavery. Lavery is, was prolific. He had a very long painting career, um, but he's very widely collected, and um, his pictures are very expensive. Um, well, we've got the, this very grand um, portrait of Mrs. McEwen, Mrs. McEwen of the Brewing family and her two daughters. Um, and this is um, sort of bravura grand style portrait painting. And Lavery, around about 1900, starts to do that, um, his career moves in that direction. And he really um, he becomes a rival for um, to Sargent uh, as the society portrait painter in London. Um, and it's, um, the, the influences initially uh, goes back to Velazquez um, but um, it's something he's very good at and uh, he became famous for these, these sort of society portraits um, but then to, to, to the left you've got um, painting of Beaulieu in the, on the, um, the French Riviera uh, and to the right we've got uh, Nighttime Tangier. He actually had a house in Tangier and spent a lot of time there. Uh, he, he basically wintered, wintered abroad, um, so he was always in, in very exotic places um, through the winter and um, in London during the summer. But um, 
he was extremely hard working. Um, he he's, was uh, painting all the time. There's a very haunting painting by Sir James Guthrie over there, um, which is called The Tea Party. But really, w what is going on, it was painted during the First World War, and it's obvious that the, 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 the officer, the man sitting there, has been wounded in the trenches in France and has come home to England to recuperate. And he's in this wonderful idyllic set setting. I think that's probably his nurse in the background and maybe his sister and his girlfriend or wife. He has a haunted look about him. And, and I, I think really what's going on is that he's probably recuperated and he's now got the ghastly thought of having go to go back to the trenches. But there's this um, very sort of telling contrast about the... Um, this beautiful sunlit garden in England and the horrors that are going over on in the trenches in France. Melville, Arthur Melville, is probably the most original of all the Glasgow boys. His, principally, his, his work was in watercolour. Um, and like Lavery, he was a great traveller. This watercolour here is of, of a, um, a market in Baghdad. Uh, and he spent... Uh, most a lot, of, a lot of his later career was there. He has a very short career. He died in 1904, before any of the other Glasgow boys. Um, he contracted an illness out there. Um, but he, he's pro I think he was probably the, the most accomplished watercolourist working in, in Britain in the 1880s and 90s. And um, totally original. He's got this blottesque technique where um, he paints uh, a very wet technique um, with a wet brush on wet paper and um, y you get this wonderful shimmering effect and very good effects of heat. Um, right, this small painting is by Edward Atkinson Hornell and it was would be painted in Galloway uh, in Kukubrisha. He lived in Kukubri. Um, and it is painted in 1896. He and George Henry had spent 18 months um, the year previously in Japan and um, they were very privileged to be in Japan because Japan was still a very closed society um, but they managed to escape from the compound, the European compound and go into the sort of back streets of Tokyo and they painted geisha girls and things like that and they painted these wonderfully exotic pictures. But this is Hornell coming back to Scotland um, but uh, you can see in the composition what he's learned from um, Japanese uh, art and calligraphy and also the colouring, the very strong colouring you get in Japanese prints. It's a, it's a really complex painting and you have to look quite hard to see what's going on. There are actually seven girls there, it is very abstracted and you can see on the left hand side these four goats. Um, there's a bit of symbolism there because in Celtic mythology goats uh, symbolised um, fecundity and uh, hence their slightly um, threatening presence to these um, young maidens who are about to go up and go out into the adult world. But it's very avant-garde for its time, painted in the 1890s, incredibly strong, rich colours. And it's actually far advanced of most painting in Britain and, uh, in fact, in London at the time. It's, it's right.